I've got a couple of things planned this afternoon. We're going to go to the Genocide Museum, yeah. which is literally just out the back. It's just out here, look, I'll show you. There you go, it's just down there. So we're going to go there today. We'll, uh, you can get a guide, and you just give them a donation, so we'll, uh, we'll do that, help them out a bit. Quite looking forward to it. I know it's going to be dark and it's going to be uh, upsetting and stuff, but it's going to be interesting as well. So come along. Just show you around uh, the apartment actually. The bed's really comfortable. I've got a little uh, sort of wet room to carry on with a mop because we have to do our own cleaning because it's an apartment. I've got a questionable hook here. And then we've got a kitchen. Uh, a lot of stuff that we'll never use, but it's here anyway. The only problem is, the old apartment's got curtains, so on a night time, that's pretty good. Close them. But then we've got this door here. And it's a glass door. And there's no, there's no curtains in the kitchen. Yeah, you write only one and two person. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you. 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 Thank Tool Slang Genocide Museum. This wasn't always a place of sadness. It wasn't always a museum. It used to be a secondary school filled with children's laughter, a place for children to be educated, a place of happiness and of safety. All that changed in 1975 when the Khmer Rouge regime took over the secondary school and turned it into Security Prison 21. Led by the infamous tyrant Pol Pot, they either captured or forced all the citizens in Phnom Penh out of the city to the countryside to work in the killing fields. From 1976 to 1979, it housed approximately 20,000 prisoners. At any one time, there was between a thousand to one and a half thousand prisoners. The prisoners were tortured and executed in extreme and inhumane ways. Waterboarding was a technique used, along with electrocution and whipping. Whilst being tortured, they had a rule that you were not allowed to make a noise or cry out in pain. We had a guide while walking round. She was 13 year old when this happened and was sent off to the killing fields to work for 12 hours a day in extreme conditions, only getting a small bowl of rice to eat for food per day. She remembers the Kima Rouge vividly and her knowledge was so educational to hear. When you walk around the museum, there's an eerie feeling. So much sadness has soaked into the walls. The classrooms were made into cells, so many prisoners crammed into tiny spaces, all shackled to prevent escape attempts. Barbed wire was used heavily around the camp for the same reason. All prisoners slept on the hard floor, no blankets or mosquito nets. Shackled together to the floor, the prisoners were forbidden to speak to each other. Prisoners were only given an ammunition box for a toilet. The smell in the cells must have been horrific. You can still see where the classrooms were divided into tiny rooms for prisoners. 
and in one of the buildings they've kept the original brickwork so you can see how small the rooms actually were. When walking around the museum you can see many photographs. The Rouge made sure to take photographs of everyone that they captured. When the prisoners arrived they were all made to write out an extensive autobiography starting as a child and then when being captured. All their possessions were taken from them and they were made to strip down to their underwear. All of their clothes were thrown into piles. The females were all made to have their hair cut in a short bob. All the photographs were found when the Vietnamese army stormed the base and took it over in 1979, thus bringing down the regime of the Khmer Rouge. Our guide told us that of the 20,000 people held in the prisoner camp, only 11 people actually made it out alive. This was seven adults and four children. Of the 11 people, we were honoured to meet one of the children and one of the adults, both who work at the museum and have wrote books on their time in S21. Of the four children who survived, two went to Germany and are still thought to live there now, and two were brothers. One of the brothers who we met told us how they hid under a pile of prisoners' clothes trying to survive. It's hard to believe that this actually took place, that people can be so cruel to other humans. This was a hard place to visit. However, we're so glad that we got to know more about the history of Phnom Penh. That was heavy, wasn't it? Really heavy. It's like you walk around in absolute disbelief at what went, what went on there. I don't understand how human beings can be so cruel to other human beings. Uh, oh, was, you, you can just feel something in the air. I can't really explain it. But, I mean, I'm glad we went and we got to meet two of the only 11 survivors of that place, which was really humbling. Yeah. I don't know what else to say, really. We'll see you in the next video.